There's a lie that is so easy for homemakers and stay-at-home moms to believe. And I know I've believed this lie, and maybe you have too. And this lie is that the woman that speaks at the ladies' conference such powerful spiritual words, or that female that wrote that really spiritual book and continues to write more books than you can fold laundry, or you know, that girl that travels the world preaching the gospel everywhere she goes without husband, without children, that these women could have such a greater impact on the kingdom of God and advancing the gospel than you or I, mothers who spend the majority of our time taking care of our children and cleaning our house and tending to our home could ever hope to do. I believe this lie and maybe you have too. And today I want to share with you some different insights that I've been gleaning and thinking of a lot lately that I hope will perhaps shake you and break you out of this lie that I have subconsciously even found myself following in for so many years and have finally started to see perhaps a different perspective. So starting out, I wanted to read two different Bible verses. The first is found in Titus chapter 2. And in the book of Titus, Paul is writing to a church and he is telling in chapter 2 the older women what to teach the younger women that they need to prioritize, that they need to work on. These women were maybe new, just coming into the church, not really sure what the role of a Christian woman would be. And one of the things in this rather short list that Paul tells the older women to teach the younger women to do is to be homemakers. Or, in another translation, I think it says keepers of the home. The other verse that I wanted to read is in Psalms 113. And Psalms 113 is praising God for all these different reasons, and it lists a whole bunch of reasons. But in the very last verse, it says one of the reasons to praise God is he grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. This tells me that despite the fact that sometimes maybe we feel like this is fate that we're here at home or that we have so many children or that we don't have a ministry, these two verses tell me that this is in fact a beautiful thing. This is in fact a very, very high calling. And this is in fact, if you are a mother, if you take care of children, a ministry you have been called to do. Am I saying that women can't have ministries besides tending to their children, to their husband? Absolutely not. Elizabeth Elliot is a huge hero of mine and she did many things besides tend to her child and her husband. However, I am saying that I do truly believe the Bible makes it fairly clear that they are to be our first priority. First God, then our husband, then our children, and whatever time is left over, I believe we can use for whatever other things we feel called to do. But I don't think they should be neglected by us believing the lie that other things are of so much more value than them, when these are in the exact list of things Paul tells young women to pursue and make a priority, a huge priority in their life. So this being said, just because you stay at home or because you call yourself a homemaker, I don't believe makes your home any type of ministry. I believe it's something that has to be intentional, it has to be sought after in prayer, and it has to be done correctly. Or else you can just use it as an excuse to sit around lazily on your couch all day, watching TV, eating potato chips, neglecting your children, all the while claiming that this is in fact a ministry. So before I share some practical ways that I'm going to try to make my home more of a ministry, I want to share with you one of two seasons that I believe every mother is probably in. The first season is you are a mother with a ton of little children. You work nonstop. You are constantly pouring out for others. You are constantly taking care of your children, taking care of the baby. You're up at night. You're exhausted. You work 24-7. I do not want you to watch this video and think, oh great, I don't have a ministry. Oh great, there's more I have to add to the to-do list to be a good Christian because I don't believe that is at all true. I believe this is the time that the next type of woman I want to talk about needs to come in and help you. And the next type of woman is someone more like myself. I have one child. I have a lot of time that I'm still able to do things I really enjoy doing. My husband is really helpful. This is a time in my life where I'm not yet in the trenches. And so I want to take advantage of that by helping women that are 
just as when I am someday in those trenches, I would pray that a woman would be willing to serve me. So maybe you're the first woman, you're overwhelmed, you have a ton on your plate, or maybe you're more like myself, you have one kid, you're not so deep in the trenches yet. Either way though, maybe you have experienced these feelings I described at the beginning of this video of just feeling like you're not enough or like you're not contributing enough to the spiritual arena of life. And so I want to challenge you first by asking you this question. So imagine that you met someone who seemed very nice and you walked up to her and you asked her, you know, what she did. And she said, well, I'm a teen mentor. I have five teens. I meet with each one of them one day of the week for an hour and I mentor them in their spiritual walk and just give them practical everyday advice. I don't know about you, but for myself, I would be honestly really impressed and I would be like, whoa, this person has its head together. They're sharing advice. They're someone's mentor. They have five teens that they're mentoring an hour every day, every day of the week. And yet when God gives us a child and asks us to be not only their mentor, but their parent, and not only an hour every week, but 24 hours a day, I don't view it the same way, or I haven't in the past. I haven't viewed it as a ministry. I've viewed it as something that's keeping me from being able to do ministry. And yet, how backward is that and how wrong that is? And so, if you are working with children in any way in your life, God has given you a ministry directly in front of you. He has given you someone to pour into, to mentor, to give advice to, to love, to train, to build character in. And that is, in fact, a beautiful ministry. You know, the other day as I was scrubbing kitchen cabinets, I got to thinking. And I started thinking about the opportunities I have because I'm here at home more often. Because I'm not tied down to a 9 to 5 job. Because I am able to be more flexible with my time. And because I am that woman in more of the second scenario that I shared with you. How much of a larger opportunity I have actually to do ministry than some woman who's maybe running a nine to five job and then coming home and taking care of her kids and trying to put her house in order and trying to pay attention to her husband. And I started thinking, am I taking advantage of this? And how clever it would be of Satan to lie and tell us women that here, the place where we are, we're so trapped, we can't be of any value to God or to anyone around us when actually the exact opposite is true. And so here's just a simple list of some things I put together that I want to start incorporating more of in my life, especially this next year, just to serve other people, to make my home a ministry, to be a blessing because I am in a stage of life where I can pour out to others because I'm not being so sucked dry by just living in survival mode. And so I wanted to share this list with you and hope that it gives you some ideas as well. And maybe if you feel like you are one of the women that have a little bit of extra time or feel like they could be doing more and wonder what they could be doing to help others, maybe this will give you some ideas because it's certainly giving me some that I want to apply. I want to start out by saying that these are not things that I've done tons of. These are things I want to incorporate into my life because a lot of these I've only done once. Some of them I haven't even done at all. So with that being said, the first thing that comes to mind is to bring women from your church or women that you know that have just had a baby meals. This was such a blessing to me when we had just had Carrie. And I couldn't imagine if I had had a lot more kids just how amazing it would have been then knowing that I didn't have to try to provide food as I healed. The next thing that I think of is hospitality. Hospitality is such a beautiful way to be able to witness to people, to be able to love people. And I completely believe that you can make your home, your ministry, just by the people that you invite in. And so if you haven't seen my hospitality videos, I'll link them down below. I have two where I talk about it in a lot more depth and I don't know what I'm doing either. And so these are tips that people gave me that I found really, really helpful. 
The next thing that I think of was actually from this woman that I know that is so admirable. She's in her 70s now. But I remember her telling me once that in their first year of marriage, her and her husband, she told her husband to go out on Thanksgiving and invite all the elderly people from the town into her home and she was going to serve them Thanksgiving dinner. These were just lonely older people who had no one to spend it with and so she just opened up her home to them. And I thought that was just such a beautiful example of love and care for the people in your community and I thought it was such a good idea. Another thing that I think of that's one of my favorites to do is offer to clean someone's house, especially a mother with lots of little children who maybe hasn't had a really clean house in a long time. I remember growing up, there were six of us kids running around, my mom homeschooled us all, my dad was gone a lot, and I remember random people from the church just stopping by with a mop and a vacuum and offering to clean our house, which was just so thoughtful. So that's one of my favorite ones to do, especially since I don't enjoy cooking so much. But along the cooking lines, another thing you can always do is bring people from your church or from your community that are maybe sick a meal. You don't even have to interact with them. You can just leave it on their porch. I think that's a beautiful way to witness as well. The last one is the one I think is probably the most important. And that is to volunteer to watch couples kids so that they can go on a date. Honestly, you could be saving someone's marriage by doing this. So I'm going to be incorporating these into my routines this next year into some type of a monthly schedule probably to ensure that I actually do these things because I do think these are really, really important and valuable. And I have the time, so why not? So I hope this video was helpful. I'll link down below my three lies that homemakers believe. You might enjoy that video if you enjoyed this one. If you hate this video, I probably wouldn't recommend you go and watch that one. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you hopefully next Saturday in my next video. Bye-bye.